for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty. With that, let me know for the public that there is a copy of the Open Meetings Act on the north wall of the legislative chambers. Uh, I would like to also note that there is an automatic external defibrillator available in the back wall of the legislative chambers if needed. With that, we will call to order the Douglas County Board of Equalization meeting. Roll call, please. Commissioner Borgeson, Commissioner Boyle, Here. Commissioner Cavanaugh, Commissioner Duda, Here. Commissioner Kraft, Here. Commissioner Morgan, Mr. Chair. Here. Uh, item A, approval of the minutes of the Board of Equalization meeting held Tuesday, March 8, 2016. Item B, call for a meeting and set Tuesday, March 22, 2016 as a day for hearing on certified assessments and corrections reflecting additions of omitted property to the tax rolls or increased value of the property. What's the approval of A and B? Second. There's a motion in the second. Um, please vote. Motion passes. Item C is citizens comments. This is an opportunity for anybody to speak on any item not listed on the Board of Equalization's agenda at this time. Are there any citizens comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to resolutions. Uh, we have D, E, F, and G, and uh, Mr. Goodwill, I'm just asking D and E are the new process you all are doing is this volume is, this is not the new process you all doing with corrections. Okay. Mike Goodwillie, Douglas County Assessor, Register of Deeds Office. No, this is not uh, okay. Commissioner Rogers. This is sort of the run of the mill sort of moving target flotsam and jetsam that we have that, that uh, comes up on the beach uh, okay. uh, periodically. Uh, no, that that whole uh, overvalued, undervalued thing can't go to you folks until at least the 1st of June. Okay, thank you. Well, it's the will of the, oh, sorry. Go we ahead. have no will of a, or need of an executive session, is that right? No, not to my knowledge, not here, not here. I didn't go all the way through German, but German too, yeah. Okay. That's a second. There's a motion to approve items D through G and adjourn. Uh, please vote. I, I do it the first And uh, I want to note I'm abstain abstaining because of the one item in there related to crazy. I'm one of them. Uh, Commissioner Morgan. Motion passes. Okay, with that, we would call to order the Douglas County Board of Commissioners meeting. Roll call, please. Commissioner Borgeson, Commissioner Boyle, Commissioner Cavanaugh, Commissioner Duda, Here. Commissioner Kraft, Here. Commissioner Morgan, Mr. Chair. Here. Um, Item 1, Minutes and Claims. Item A, Approval of the Minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held Tuesday, March 8th. Item B, Approval of Claims submitted for payment and process through Tuesday, May 15th, 2016. There's a motion. There's a second. Seeing no questions, everyone please vote. Hey. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, that, that motion passes. Item two is consent agenda. We have 10 items on the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull anything from the consent agenda? Mr. Chair, I have just one question about item B that says not budgeted, just for the clarity. I, I know how this happens and what, I, I know how it happens, but could you talk a little bit about it, Joe? Um, this is, if, if you remember, we had the uh, presentation with the treasurer's office at the finance committee, and this was the, uh, project where we looked at investing excess funds and uh, we did the analysis and we saw that this could be worth uh, anywhere between uh, half a million and a million dollars but to get it going there's some like startup costs that haven't been budgeted and that's uh, having asset consulting who is our pension fund consultant work with us in putting out uh, exact investment criteria and then uh, leading a selection process for a fixed income manager. So while the 20000 isn't budgeted, it will be um, more than offset by, you know, 500000 to a million of uh, incremental investment income uh, from uh, investing the excess cash reserves in the treasurer's office to offset it. 
thank you very much i do have one other question on item h on the surplus property uh, i got my <clears throat> get my information from the world herald and this morning i saw that uh, uh, some of the property is hot and i'm curious whether uh, if someone comes back and uh, tries to claim that are are we uh, uh in trouble or do we pass the best title possible or how does that work teresa Tracy, York County Attorney's Office. Some of the property is what? I, I'm sorry, I did not understand what you said, Commissioner. I'm sorry. Is it hot? Hot? Property, property was stolen. Oh. You're going to come in and play. We're, we're, we're selling property that has uh, been stolen, and I wonder, you know, if someone comes in and says, that's my gold watch after or finds out about it, uh, what's our liability, if any? Do you know? I'm unaware that any of the property listed on today's agenda falls into that category and I don't have an answer for you off the top of my head I would have to research that commissioner okay well uh, I'll leave let's leave it in and we'll figure it out later I believe the only two items listed for today are uh, two copiers both of which are broken and therefore declared surplus oh we want to buy those <laughs> I'll, ta I'll take those <laughs> okay uh, is there a motion a second motion to, pr to approve second there's a motion a second seeing no further discussion Please vote. Motion passes. Item four, citizens' comments. Are there any citizens that wish to comment on any item not officially listed on today's Douglas County agenda? Are there any citizens' comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to presentations in item eight, Sienna Francis House update from Mike Sacklaw, the executive director. And Commissioner Kraft, it's your item. If you would like to say anything, uh, to, I saw on Facebook where you started your project on 16th Street. I was impressed with what I saw and what you've been doing. So I thought it'd be nice for you to let all of us know. Thank you very much for. Uh, giving me this opportunity to share. My name is Mike Sackler. I'm the executive director of the Santa Francis House, an independent uh, nonprofit corporation located at 16th and Nicholas Street, actually 17th and Nicholas Streets. Uh, just a quick overview. Uh, last year, we housed 3,654 unique men, women, and children in our facilities overnight. 27% were women and children. Uh, over 35% had a serious disability, uh, primarily mental illnesses, addictions, or co-occurring uh, together with uh, physical and developmental disabilities. 59% uh, of everybody that we housed last year were considered first-time homeless in our system anyway for the very first time. Uh, for families, it was 83%. About 60% of the women uh, reported uh, being uh, victims of domestic violence. And so you can see that we're serving a very unique uh, population in this community. Uh, many, if not most, of the individuals we house do not meet the entry criteria for the other shelters. Thus, uh, we operate at a, a critical overcapacity at all times. Uh, so far this year, we've operated at 159% of capacity, meaning we're sleeping a lot of men and women and sometimes children on the floors in our facilities. Uh, I think we peaked in January with 139 men on the floor one night on, in our men's Bay Wright shelter. I think that it's important to note that uh, uh, this long-term overuse has uh, worn out the facilities, uh, and in the Bay Wright in particular, the men's shelter, uh, uh, we started looking at having to gut and replace the, the showers and restrooms. And so we had a plan to expand that uh, building to the north, but uh, we were able to find a willing seller of the Omaha Foreign Auto Parts. Uh, and you can see it on this map, and I wish I could blow it up for you a little bit, uh, but I can't. And so uh, if you see, uh, we've got 16th Street running north and south, and then Nicholas. Uh, east and west here. Uh, the Bay Wright is this big silver building and then uh, sandwiched between that building and 16th Street is a junkyard that runs about two and a half blocks. Uh, we acquired that in November uh, and this gives us an opportunity to expand our men's shelter 
and uh, some other amenities that will help address uh, this most critical uh, high need uh, homeless population in our community, uh, which uh, quite frankly uh, uh, are uh, the most difficult, most needy people in our uh, community, in my opinion. Uh, the junkyard has been cleaned and uh, we've just recently demolished the buildings and, and Commissioner Kraft, that's what you saw on Facebook. Uh, so we continue to clean the site up. Uh, and uh, if we take a look here at the next slide, uh, highlighted in green is the property that we have purchased. It runs all the way up to uh, Catholic for Campus, Catholic Charities Campus for Hope uh, properties to the very far north. Uh, you, you also note uh, some recently uh, developed facilities uh, on, on the west of this area, which are two uh, supportive housing apartments that house severely disabled, chronic homeless men and women. These are the really long-term people uh, with severe disabilities again, 60% uh, having a serious mental illness. Uh, then we, uh, to the northeast there, excuse me, to on the northwest is the services center. Uh, let's just take a look at the next slide, if we may. This is kind of what the campus currently looks like, minus uh, the junkyards, quite frankly, on both both sides. Uh, when I first got there, uh, our single facility, which is in the middle, was surrounded by industrial uses and junkyards. So we've done a nice job of cleaning this up. Uh, uh, you'll notice uh, some buildings in red to the right, and uh, this would be uh, the use for that salvage yard, uh, including an expansion of the men's shelter. Uh, it's planned for 400 beds, which would accommodate our peak needs and then bring people in uh, side who are currently sleeping in cars. And it's, it's so big because so many of uh, the men have disabilities, uh, prone to seizures, overweight, heart problems, physical issues. We need 250 bottom bunks mm. and 150 top bunks. It's just not safe, and we run into it constantly, uh, making decisions on whether we can put somebody on a top bunk or not, and often uh, it's not a good result. Uh, the building in red to the north along 16th Street is our vision for a daytime facility, uh, which we feel is critical to serving this community. Uh, we are attempting and we have attempted to partner in the community, implementing uh, the federal government's strategic uh, uh, plans for coordinated intake, uh, assessment and partnering with uh, housing programs and employers. I'm going to tell you, we, we do not have an office space open uh, to, uh, or a private meeting room uh, that's not being utilized to, to uh, conduct uh, the required intakes and assessments in private settings uh, for 3,000 homeless people. We just don't. Uh, and what we want to do is create what I'm consider an engagement center. Uh, we partner with over 70 programs now. We'll bring more to the table. We want them there every day, uh, but we need spaces for them uh, to work out of, and uh, uh, and it's just a critical need. Uh, we want to keep people on this campus, and I'm going to quick aside. Omaha doesn't have a huge nighttime homeless problem, and when we look at HUD's what they call AHAR, it's an annual report, it showed in 20. 14, Omaha had the third lowest percent of unsheltered in the nation, of any community in the nation. In 2013, it had the lowest percent of unsheltered. This is this point in time counts that are conducted every January. And this is solely because of Santa Francis House. Our willingness to accept anybody. Uh, we are the lowest barrier. Um, the only program that qualifies, quite frankly, is low barrier per the federal definition. We, we'll take anybody, right. and we do it, and, and we're very good at it. Uh, and so at nighttime, you don't have a whole lot of people out and about, but during the day, there is a problem, and we don't have place, spaces for them. 
Uh, we have to conduct business. We have to get everybody off the floor so we can mop and sanitize the dining room where they're sleeping on the floor, so we can do food services and all that, that other stuff. Uh, we, uh, and so we need a daytime facility so the homeless can stay on this campus and we can engage them. And, and I mean, you probably know the mentally ill are not all that easy to engage at, time, at all times. And you see so many new people coming in <coughs> onto this campus each year. Uh, mm, and so if you can work with them, feed them, give them a coat, help them in some way and start developing that relationship. I've got eight licensed mental health professionals on, that work for me and four alcohol and drug counselors. And so we, you know, we can help these people. We have our state's largest long-term chemical addiction mental health treatment center. People don't realize this. We have 79 beds long-term. We're connected to Douglas County Corrections. We're connected to Douglas County uh, Mental Hospital, Lasting Hope, uh, and it's kind of a revolving door. We know that. Uh, uh, Mark Foxell's talked about that. He's, he's never seen so many mentally ill in the prison system, according to his statements. The same holds for us. We've got, we are very likely the second largest houser of the mentally ill in our state. Uh, but we, we need to provide on-site services. This, this system of trying to send everybody all over the community for services, it's not functional, it's not efficient. And so what, what I found is we arrange for uh, an appointment at social security offices, this or that, and they're on, the, they're on the mall instead having a sack lunch. Now in 2009, we brought every sack lunch program off the mall, all of them except one, which was uh, Starfish Ministries, a U Union Pacific Sunday morning thing. But we brought every one of those sack lunch programs on our campus. They're still there to this day, <coughs> trying to keep the people here. Now, now we've got others that have filled the void. <coughs> but what we'd like to do, I'm going to go to the next slide. Uh, if you can see this, it's a little bit difficult, but you'll see some green space. We want open space. We want, let me see if I can find it better. Mm. We want attractive areas where people, I mean, if they choose to hang out, they choose to hang out. I'd rather have them on this campus hanging out than at the Jean Leahy Mall, solely for the reason that we can then uh, develop those relationships and our partners will, will bring uh, all these other programs on this campus to, to work with the men and women who, sh who show up. Uh, also, uh, I envision and see library services Whatever it is that needs to be attracted, uh, that's attractive outside this campus, I want on this campus. Uh, right now you've got uh, people hanging out in neighborhood parks and this and that because they've got nowhere to go. Some of them are actively drinking or whatever and causing problems and it's a criminal justice problem, it's a neighborhood problem, it's a downtown problem. You know, we want to be partners. The other thing with uh, having purchased this uh, auto salvage chart, we're we're helping to open up a gateway to North Omaha. We've got uh, ballparks in Creighton University and, and uh, new hotels and new apartment buildings and all that. And it was all over luck in a junkyard. This is going to spur further development of the North Downtown, hopefully. And that whole section, uh, vast area on the east side of 16th Street all the way to 11th Street. Uh, in, in, in my opinion, just having done that is a huge service to this community. Uh, I've got uh, a project I've undertaken. The environmental cleanup alone is 1.4 million on that on that auto salvage yard, and and we had the I've already spent a million, and so I'm out actively out there trying to raise the dollars to uh, complete this effort, uh, and just move forward and create an attractive campus uh, that fits into this community uh, with good partners and good outcomes. And I've asked Ken Bunker, uh, who is like my right-hand person on this, I believe you all know Ken. Ken, do you have anything to share? Would you like to come up? <coughs> uh, Ken Bunker, um, former city attorney, I guess. <laughs> um, 
Mike's covered pretty much everything. Uh, going back to the plan, the uh, units that we have, which is permanent supportive housing, uh, were done with primarily with the tax credits. Uh, that is not available for this project. The permanent supportive housing provides a element to the campus for those, uh, you know, guests that cannot. Uh, live by themselves they go off to campus and they you know they're back in six months so with that ability to live there and then also be provided services is very important but that's only 48 units uh, we've got another 48 in mind we can get tax credits from NIFA uh, and that is you know part of the puzzle the other thing that Mike's been talking about is the two major uh, elements one is you've got to do something about the emergency overnight men's shelter uh, I don't think Mike described the horror that <laughs> it is right now. It's used up the bathrooms. Uh, we've sort of patched together a slight solution. But if you look at the current shelter and you look at what we need, it's about twice as big and it's the same number of people. So we're not adding more homeless to the campus. We're providing, you know, humane treatment uh, for those that are already there at night. And then the biggest change, which is not being provided for now, which Mike said, is daytime services, where you can engage those uh, folks to stay during the night, both uh, families and men and women, where you can provide services, get to know them, work with them. And there's, it's just simply there's no facility there now. This is a small building, which is essentially cracked in the middle, which you have about 100 people gathered in there during inclement weather, and you can barely stand up, let alone, you know, have services provided. So the daytime center, that's what we're calling it, is that building to the north of the new uh, emergency shelter. And that would, as Mike said, uh, be available to provide services not only from Santa Francis House, but all the other providers of similar services in the, in the city. So it's really a unique situation which was developed as a campus with permanent supportive housing, emergency shelter, daytime services, and all those uh, other services that are currently being provided. Uh, we've cleared the site uh, on 16th Street. Uh, the contractor, uh, demolition contractor, has assured us that by the end of the week that'll be uh, clean. What'll be left? is uh, sort of a moonscape of rolling concrete that's been dumped there through the years. And we're planning on just leaving that in place until we have the funds to go forward with the emergency shelter. Uh, we're actively pursuing capital campaign. Um, we'll have a bucket over here if you want to drop some money. Yeah. <laughs> Need 15 million, so one can have to buy it. <laughs> uh, so that, that, that is something we've just started. We've been talking to all the foundations in town. Uh, everyone seems to be very supportive. Uh, we've yet to put together the money, but uh, we've just really begun on that. The city's been very active in helping us both uh, helping pay for the architecture services, and a large part of that has also been donated by Alley Pointer. Uh, we've been working with them for probably about five, six years on, on the various aspects of the campus. So we've pretty got a pretty good idea of what we need to do and a schedule. Uh, and the next thing is the major fundraising. Mike, I'm sure there are going to be some questions. Right. I would like to compliment you. Um, I lamented when you left the City of Omaha Planning Department. I really regretted your loss. Till I saw what you were doing and capable of doing with the Sienna Francis House. Just a fantastic job, and I know you don't like praise, but just a fantastic job of, <clears throat> of taking care of people in need, which is what we do on the county level also. And I've driven 16th Street numerous times. When they closed 16th Street for the Hilton, I was at the planning board meeting with my father, and he said, that's going to devastate this part of town. And closing 16th Street, which used to be one of the most desirable streets in the city, for people who don't know, it had some of the most expensive apartments and apartment buildings and houses there. When they closed 16th Street, it devastated North Omaha. The other thing it did when I was on the city council, I calculated 
the increases in taxes in that part of town and property values went way down while the rest of Omaha was subsidizing their lack of taxable assets. All of us paid about 16% more in our base property taxes because of the degradation of that part of town. Um, what you're doing is, as you mentioned and touched upon, but not enough, tremendously going to improve that part of town, tremendously. Thank you. I also need to talk to you after this. I still have two pellets of those sponges, and I have some other items I can donate to you. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you for the kind words. Uh, I will mention this. Uh, when I was at city planning, I found Sienna Francis House to be a hidden jewel in this community. It was the only place that would take intoxicated homeless people. I found that to be true. Uh, and the most dysfunctional, mentally ill people around. I, I worked with uh, the Jefferson Square Neighborhood Association to actually move them off of uh, 19th and talk? coming and get them to this this new human services oh, area. And I worked with Catholic Charities to bring in the Campus for Hope and then uh, mo more recently New Visions, which is a veterans uh, transitional housing program to, to the far north. Uh, this, this campus can accomplish a lot of good. It just needs the backing of this community to uh, put in the facilities and services that can help a lot of people. Uh, I don't think you. I don't think you know this, but my father's first business was at 16th in Chicago, right on the corner across from Jefferson Square. And when I was nine years old, I used to play with the homeless and the uh, the bums and the hobos that lived in Jefferson Square. And uh, so I have a lot of empathy because a lot of these people do have that mental illness that nobody wants to employ them. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Boer. Well, Mark has another story that he's told me on 16th Street about hanging out at a bar across the street. That <laughs> if he, nine years old if, Yeah, and if he keeps this up, I'm going to tell him. No, I'm telling him. It's a great story. Um, the fact of the matter is that you are really uh, taking over the responsibility that Douglas County has. We are the, uh, according to state law, we are the uh, place of last resort. And uh, you, you have stepped up over the years. And I, as I told you when I saw you today, I'm just an absolute huge admirer of what you've done. And, and I've got to mention Ken Bunger, who stepped up uh, with his notable skills. He's the guy that really put together so many of the plans silently behind the scenes that led to the development of downtown Omaha. He's, he's the brains behind these things. So it's a wonderful partnership. But I think what we need to do, um, PJ Morgan and I are on the uh, finance committee. And um, I'm going to be asking the, uh, our, our money guy, Joe Lorenz, just exactly how much money do we give you? What is our financial support to you for, the, for carrying out our responsibilities? Dealing with every person, every person you deal with, we are responsible for. We are, and you're stepping up to take care of it. So um, I plan to to explore that, and uh, hopefully, not hopefully, but I, I really think uh, when, once the county board sees this responsibility, I think they'll step up to the plate. Um, I'm curious about a library. Uh, do, you, do you have what? What is your? I, I need to come out and see you. It's been a long time, but what what is the? Do you have a library? We do not. Obviously, we've got uh, a small office with some computers. Uh, quite frankly, we're, we're, we, we host Access Nebraska. We're the, their number one site, I believe. Really? Uh, right. And so all the homeless, uh, once a week, uh, the state employees come down, and they're on the computers all day getting whatever benefits uh, applied for that they're eligible for. Uh, and obviously, we've got bookshelves and books, yeah. but we don't. It's 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 not consolidated in one area, and it's not service oriented, and so we do not have a library. But I feel if we have the library services, and it can be done by volunteers, yeah, we can do it. And uh, I believe the library, uh, all public library, will be a good partner in helping us uh, to plan and establish this, uh, because uh, 
the homeless do use those, their services. They're on, right. looking for jobs or whatever, or on the internet, or, or what, and all that stuff. Well, you know, we have a relationship that uh, Claire Duda put together several years ago with individuals who live in the county so they can have access to the Omaha Public Library. And frankly, maybe we need to figure out a way to uh, attach you to that same system somehow. I'm not sure how, but maybe we need to, need to do that. Uh, finally, I, I've got a lot of things I'd like to say about you, but I too share, I'm so pleased that Mark uh, saw that and brought you in because uh, uh, you really are at the forefront of so many of these important services. And I'd like to ask, uh, ask you uh, if you would, because there are a lot of people who watch this uh, uh, and um, they're just huge fans, especially of me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, if you'd give your phone number, I think it'd be terrific. Uh, someone who wants to volunteer or if you have supplies, I know there's su supplies, particularly the personal things that you need uh, to service people. If you give your phone number two or three times, people will write that down and maybe they can make a contribution either financially or some other way. Would you do that, Mike? Well, yes. First of all, I think the best thing is our website, www.siemafrancis. Say that, say that a couple times. Say that a couple times. Good. One N. That, uh, otherwise, it'll autocorrect two Ns. Okay. You have to type in one N. Our, our business uh, <coughs> main line is 402-341-1821. Okay. Three four one eighteen twenty one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate it, and I'm going to uh, contact you to do a, a upgrade, updated tour, and uh, come come by and see what you're doing, and see what we can do to really help. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you, Commissioner Cavanaugh. Um, I just want to commend you for the uh, outstanding work that you do. Um, you know, President Kennedy said that on uh, this. Uh, Earth, uh, God's work must truly be our own, and I, I got to think, uh, based on uh, what I know that you do and the presentation you've made today, that you're certainly doing God's work, uh, clothing the naked, feeding the hungry, and housing the homeless. No higher, uh, I, I think, work can be done by any of us, and so thank you uh, for what you're doing. Thank you for this uh, presentation here today and uh, keep it up. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your kind words. Commissioner Kraft. Yes. Um, regarding your library, I, I've been buying subscriptions to a number of magazines for the county correctional facilities and the youth detention center because it keeps fresh reading material there. And I got on a magazine sucker list. And I'm getting all these uh, <laughs> renew prescriptions or uh, subscriptions, excuse me, uh, where I can subscribe for $10 for a year, $12.99 for a year, et cetera. Uh, are there any particular magazines, because I have two of them laying on my desk at home right now, that you would like to see come into the organization? Can I check with staff and send you an email? Oh, oh please do. And, and, and I'm sure that any magazine would be appreciated. So anybody in the listening audience that gets these solicitations, or even if you don't, subscribing to magazines is a great way for the young people to learn to read, the young people to keep abreast of situations, what's going on, and opportunities. I mean, Better Homes and Gardens, Inc., Forbes, uh, Time, Newsweek, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, let me know what you'd like, and I'll find some. Well, I would say suggest right now Time or Newsweek week would be appropriate. Yeah. And I know you could use multiple copies of each because of the number of people you have. Thank, right. you. Thank you. I really appreciate your coming today. Mike, that's all the questions we have. Thank you again. Thank you for the work you all are doing. Appreciate your time. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks again. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, guys. We'll be in touch. <coughs> With that, we will go to uh, item 7, committee uh, discussion and action. We have item A, the finance committee, commissioners Morgan and Boyle, and the uh, budget report. Any information from you two? I, I'd say uh, the only thing I have is after listening to this today, I think we need to, we need to seriously talk about what our responsibility is to support this organization. <coughs> Uh, they are absolutely everything they do is what we are supposed to be doing. 
And um, I think that they're doing it efficiently. They're spending the money wisely. I mean, I know that uh, uh, this is an organization that uh, if they, well, they're just spending the money wisely, and we need to figure out what we can do to help um, financially with some of their operations. And I, I'd like to see that in the budget, to tell you the truth. I, and I think we need to start talking to the hospitals again, which we have never really done well. We've tried. But I think they have responsibilities, too, and, and maybe they need to be contributing. And then likely uh, ties into what we've talked about three years ago and so on that other cities are doing the payment in lieu of taxes right. and look at that joe we can have some discussion on that and then uh i think our first budget meetings are next tuesday right after the board and i'd say to chris and uh we'll talk to mary ann you know so that we can kind of have those meetings not long board meetings but uh, expedite the board meetings and then try to go into the budget right after if we can that helps everyone too um, so we can get a lot of those uh, handled maybe some other days too um, so that's all i have okay. uh, item g human resource uh, can I, can I comment? oops sorry go that's go. okay uh, and i'd like to remind the public that our finance meetings and all committee meetings are open to the public the public is welcome to come down and watch us as we debate and argue and and discuss we don't argue discuss how the money should be spent where it can be saved and what needs to be done so right good good point thank you and with that i'd add because mark and i served when i first came on the board as a finance uh, co-chairpersons and one thing we don't do there aren't any budget meetings without it being totally open right. period for the last five years and i know right. mike you've commented that that didn't use to always Big be change so uh that's the way we're going to keep doing things and if somebody hears that we had a meeting on the budget without it we want to hear about it publicly mr cavill yeah i'd just like to uh, uh give an update on the administrative services committee meeting that we had this morning following up on what pj said about the open transparency well if you can't commissioner Kavanaugh, let me let Sorry? me let me close the finance piece i'll give you time on the administrative piece if you that's want. fine um any other finance related questions okay with that we'll go to administrative services commissioner Kavanaugh. we had a uh, administrative services committee meeting this morning and uh the main topic of discussion was twofold. First of all, uh, the upcoming bond issue uh, and our space needs uh, going forward. And secondly, uh, the strategic planning that we're engaged in. Uh, and uh, Diane Wallace from IT uh, presented us with a, a strategic planning document relative to uh, uh, her efforts and uh, what we're doing in, in IT. And then we looked at uh, an outline of the strategic planning report that Patrick Bloomingdale is going to present to us on the 22nd, I believe, uh, relative to the uh, county's overall strategic planning initiatives. The bond um, initiative going forward is uh, every month becoming more and more definite relative to its extent uh, and uh, what is going to be included in it. Um, we'd urge you to review the uh, minutes of, of that meeting, and um, we will be uh, discussing those matters as well uh, in the uh, April uh, Administrative Services uh, Committee meeting uh, to be scheduled. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we'll go now to uh, letter G, Human Resources. Item one is the weekly, now, weekly personnel report from civil service. Uh, anybody any questions or concerns on that it is as submitted uh, item two is the weekly report uh, from the CAO on staff assaults nothing to report thank you uh, item three is legislative issues they were on recess yesterday they come back in today we did receive weekly reports from Marcos on that so if there's any questions um, uh, definitely feel free to address that uh, we have no other legislation, and we do have need for an executive session on personnel issues. So with that, uh, is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. I, I will second it, but I'd like to comment that 
after this meeting in room 903, there will, there will be a community service meeting, and we will be reviewing revised extension board constitution and bylaws, uh, the planning commission appointments, a uh, contract for Jack Phillips, uh, an arborist, and any other business. Okay. So, there's motion second for executive session. Uh, everyone, please vote. Motion passes. Okay. Hey, Chris, nice job. We're going to...
And I'd like to remind people that uh, our, our meeting will start in 12 minutes in room 903 for community okay. service. I have an airport meeting I'm going to do. Okay. Please vote. Motion passes.